Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are going to be dealing with a downstairs bathroom that has not been functioning almost since we moved in here. So we're going to be installing a new toilet on, on a slab. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure if there's cast iron pipes under the floor here. Not sure what we're going to run into. So let me show you what we have here and then we will dig into removing the old toilet, putting a new one in and hooking the water line up. So this is the, the lower level of our house. It's a all living space. Uh, it's a walkout basement. And so we have this uh, small bathroom down here and it's had this super small toilet. <laughs> it's kind of, a, I've never seen a toilet like this. We had some issues with it leaking and we also had some issues with underground plumbing, which I've talked about in previous videos. And so we discontinued using this. I've got some of those plumbing issues figured out. And so it's time to get a new regular size toilet in here, make sure that it doesn't leak and make this a uh, function. So generally when you're dealing with these toilets, you've got a water connection, some type of a valve here. You've got two holes. There's a one on this side and one on the other side. This is uh, not how it should look. There's usually a washer on top of this, this nut. And then uh, that will obviously come off. That's, that's what's bolted to the, the flange underneath. And then a lot of times you'll have, um, this isn't actually water. This is clear silicone they put around this. It looks wet. Uh, but this needs to be cut. Usually there'll be a caulk line around the toilet that you'll need to cut. So that's where we're going to start. We'll unhook our water line. We'll cut uh, free the, uh, the silicone sealant. We'll undo the nut uh, on each side, this side and that side. And then we'll take this toilet out and see what uh, kind of mess we have underneath. Now that I get closer, I think I see why it may have been leaking. This looks like PEX pipe here, and uh, it's been taped, so that's interesting. <laughs> That's kind of gross. So we'll have to clean all that out. Uh, so the plan will be I'm going to scrape all the silicone off here, uh, clear, uh, bleach all this, clean all this up, vacuum it all up, make it all look nice. Uh, I'm going to probably remove all of this, put a new valve on. And just a trick whenever you're replacing a toilet, uh, this one has been sitting for a long time and so it is bone dry. It's all been evaporated, it's all dried out. But if you're replacing a toilet that has not been sitting for a long time and is bone dry, make sure you turn the water off first, flush it, and then if you actually pour a bucket of water, like if you get a small bucket of water and pour it in the toilet, it will it will flush it and it will siphon out the rest of the water that's sitting in the bowl. So then you should have very limited amount of water in there. Now you're still gonna have some, and so I'd recommend getting some towels or something like that to set the toilet on or try to uh, contain that water as you try to carry this thing out because there's going to be some water that's going to drip out and leak out unfortunately. Okay, quick update on where we're at. So got everything cleaned up here and just kind of discovered uh, what what we can reuse and what we can't. So this is a cast iron uh, pipe that goes down in underground. That's how our, our sewer pipe here is run. And so there's actually a cast iron flange. I think this is all built into this, this cast iron pipe. This is a flange that was probably put in here, I'm assuming this is the original one from 50 years ago. And it looks like what they had, um, because they've, this is the original concrete level down down there, <laughs> about here. Uh, they have tile, so there's there's tile here, and then they mortar. So you had a mortar joint, you had tile, and then they they mortared on top of that, and then they tiled again over the top of it. So we're a good half inch below the surface of the of the floor where the toilet needs to sit, and the seal really needs to happen in here. And so what we need to do is something like what they did here. It looks like they have some kind of a, 
a riser that they put in here. And so I'm gonna scrap all this, we're gonna get a new one. And so I actually ran up to Home Depot and this looks like it will work. The bolts that were in there were pretty messed up. You can see they're, they're all curved and bent and messed up. Those will get replaced as well. So this is actually like an extension. So it looks very similar to what they had in here. Um, this actually will mount down to the flange. Uh, we'll put a wax ring in the bottom here, I believe, and we have an extra one. This one came with the toilet. And then this here, the toilet will sit right down on this flange, and it comes with longer uh, bolts in here so we can make up that difference. So what I'd like to do is get this all cleaned up. And so I actually also grabbed a uh, little wire brush that I'm gonna put in my drill. So I'm gonna vacuum this all out. And then I'm gonna use that wire brush to just kind of clean up any rust in here. I'm gonna try to get some of this other wax and stuff cleaned up as best we can. Get some of the concrete dust out of our slots for the, the screws go. Um, those screws, there's a spot that's wider. So they, there's a slot right here. So they fit in, they turn sideways and then they slide in that slot. Now, not to get too far into plumbing, but uh, toilets do not have what's called a P-trap, which means that this is open right now to our sewer gases. Um, the toilet has to be put on here and it has to be sealed well here because the actual P-trap is in the toilet. If you ever look at the side of a toilet, there's a, a, a P that, so there's a, a kind of a, a loop that goes down before it goes down into this and that holds a little bit of water and that keeps gas from, you know, sewer gases from coming out and into the room. So you want to make sure that this is sealed up really well. Also, if there was ever a clog in our, our drain uh, here and the toilet backed up, we don't want all that water spilling out and, and getting in between the floors here and all over the place. So we wanna make sure this is sealed up uh, well. Well, in regular fashion, my project takes a turn, and now I'm doing other things I didn't think I would be doing, like drywall. So they had patched this before. Well, we have a toilet that works. There's still lots of uh, lots more work to do. Uh, the drywall patch was very temporary. That needs to be uh, completely redone. This drywall in here needs to be probably all torn out. Uh, I've got a lot of holes. There's nail holes all over in this wall. So this, this bathroom is gonna get a complete renovation soon, but at least we do have a functioning toilet in here for now. I really do like these uh, Kohler toilets. They're a little bit more expensive than the, the Deltas uh, or the Glacier Bays or, or some of the other ones, but uh, they, they really are a nicer toilet. Still have uh, to fix this trim. A lot of this was not done by me. Uh, this trim was kind of all screwed up beforehand. So what I really need to do is find the paint that will match that trim and then 
uh, caulk along there and repaint this, but uh, I'll, I'll worry about that another day. These kinds of projects, uh, when you're dealing with older homes, you're dealing with a concrete slab, cast iron piping, there's lots of things that can go wrong. So you never really know exactly what you're gonna run into when you, when you get something like this. Uh, I did have a couple things going for me, at least the flange itself wasn't rusted out, so I could at least get bolts put back in it. Um, so that was an advantage. If that is rusted out, you're gonna have to chip that concrete away and you're gonna have to get down there and replace the whole uh, sewer pipe and the whole toilet flange. You'll have to put a new one in. Part of the reason why I didn't button up some of these things 100% is because I have a, a future plan to tear out all the flooring in here and uh, redo all those cast iron pipes and put a shower in this bathroom. So this will get a complete renovation here probably next year, but at least until then I have a, a function toilet. So installing a toilet on a regular subfloor, if you have other toilets that you need to install in your home, it's a pretty simple process. Um, very similar to this, but actually you can, you can take out a few steps because it's a little easier. Uh, usually if you have a newer home, the toilet flange will sit on top of the floor like it's supposed to and everything will be kind of measured out right. You won't need any special fittings or adapters and you can use uh, just a regular toilet uh, toilet ring and uh, pop your toilet back on and screw it in and you're good to go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed a quick little DIY uh, project today. If you guys have questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. Throw that stuff down below. Don't forget to thumbs up on today's video. And of course, subscribe if it's your first time here. I'd love to have you tag along to the SSL Family Dad channel. Lots of DIY projects, homesteading things, animals, and uh, trying to do as much uh, ourselves as we can here. So I'd love to have you tag along for all the future fun coming up. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.